lifestyle's been freezing cold Like the diamonds in they chain, no lab grown stones Jimmy boy, you been boiling, sit on the throne They never sold shit, clone, get your ass on That bullshit is for the rodeo, it don't belong Blowing on that donut beat pack from the biggest bone From Cape Town to Ace Town, they hold it down International respect, you see the crowns Dust brothers and theme kings, we all hustlers Been rolling like Jimmy boy was feeding customers Cold as ice with the block coming cop From as well as podcasts in the world that can't fuck with us that we live, man, it's cold, it's cold, it's ice We took a chance to fall, now we set the price yeah. This life that we live, man, it's cold, it's cold, it's ice We took a chance to fall, now we set the price, let's get it let's what up, what up, everyone? How you doing, man? Welcome to another brand new episode of the world famous Cold As Ice podcast. Coming to you live from Hollywood to H-Town. I am one of your co-hosts, Ben Baller, not Ben Humble, a.k.a. The Wash Lord, a.k.a. Back Nine Ben, a.k.a. The Korean Earl Woods. On the other side, down south in Texas, we got my dog. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all know, man, it's Jimmy the Gent, a.k.a. Jimmy Boy, a.k.a. The Hustler's Choice. We here, man, straight from the A-Leaf, man. Y'all know what it is. Cold as Izzle, Bo Shizzle. Shout out to Illegal Cartel for the theme song. I know I brought mm-hmm. up Lakey. I still haven't reached out to him. I am going to reach out to him for some original music. Um, this show is brought to you by Miles Davis and Jordan Winter, a.k.a. The Dust Brothers. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Um, podcast producers of the year extraordinaires. They have a several few best. shows. And they got some big shows. Again, guys, if you have not hit that subscribe button, hit the subscribe button. It helps us. Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We still in the top 200 charts globally every single time. That's audio. But on YouTube, we're just trying to grow the video shit. You get to look at both of our ugly mugs and all that good stuff. Guys, it's been a crazy week. Look, September is already over. This shit is crazy. We are entering October, Halloween, then Thanksgiving, and then Christmas, and then New Year's, and 24 is out. This is nuts. We got election month coming up in less than two months. And in fucking five weeks. We're going to see who the fuck the next president is going to be. I don't know. We're not going to get really into that until maybe we find out who that is. But that's not either, neither here or there. It's still hot out here. It's kind of weird. It's gloomy in the morning, 58 to like 63. And then the midday, it's like 83. What's the weather like over there in Houston, Jimmy? Bro, it's still hot. It's still hot, man. You know what I mean? It's a little better during the day. You know what I'm saying? At night. At night, it looks a little better. But you know, like, like Ben was saying, man, y'all got to realize, man, we got about about a good 90 days left, man, uh, uh, uh about here uh 24 time going by fast you know with these holidays and everything it's it's, it's going by fast man and next thing you know it's going to be that quota 20 quota you know it's crazy dj homicide sent me this this meme and it fucked mm-hmm. me up it's like yo you just hit your 50s right i think homicide's 53 54 i'm 51 mm-hmm. and it's like the average lifespan of an american male today is like 76 Right, just realistically, it's the average, right? You can go to 80, but 85. I mean, look, dog, I would love yeah. to make 80, 85, whatever, and be cool, still play golf. But like, you got to look at it like you got just over 1,900 weekends left of your life. Talking about people my age, I don't know how people my age listen to the show, but that fucked me up. You know what I'm saying? And and it just kind of like, you know, it's crazy. Anyways. Yeah. The crazier part, though, is I feel... You just don't never know, you know what I mean? You'd be lucky if you even get that much time, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just not knowing I mean, dog, what happens tomorrow. Motherfuckers ain't taking care of their health. They ain't going to the dentist. Mm-hmm. They ain't doing shit. Women out there, too. Again, I've talked about this before. Girls rather buy a Louis Vuitton bag or a Gucci bag instead of getting a pap smear. Go take care of yourself. I know it ain't easy, bro. Trust me. Y'all get it. I get it. London had a lot of health issues. Our health insurance is fucking two bands a month. That shit is not cheap. That shit is rent some places, you know what I'm saying? Along with all yeah, the other bills. Yeah. I don't even complain about the shit. I'm blessed. I'm, I know I live a very blessed life, and I've learned to master the barter system. I have been the king of bartering. I am literally the absolute king of bartering. When you think about businesses growing their sales beyond forecasts, like Momofuku or Feastables by Mr. Beast, or even a legacy brand like Mattel, sure, you think about a product with demand, a focused brand, and influence-driven marketing, but an often overlooked secret is actually the businesses behind the business selling simple. For millions of businesses, that business is Shopify. Nobody does selling better than Shopify. 
home of the number one checkout on the planet. And the not so secret with shop pay that boosts conversions up to 50%, meaning way less carts going abandoned and way more sales going. So if you're gonna go growing your business, your commerce platform better be ready to sell whatever your customers are scrolling or strolling on the web, in your store, in their feed, and everywhere in between. Businesses that sell more, sell on Shopify. Sign up for your $1 per month trial at shopify.com slash baller. All lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash baller to upgrade your selling today. That's shopify.com slash baller. First topic of the day, which has been going crazy for the last four or five days since the last episode, is a Singaporean kid, 20-year-old kid named Malone Lamb. You cannot open social media without seeing this kid's face everywhere. Have you seen this shit, Timmy? Jimmy? You're talking about the crypto situation, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Did you see what this dumb motherfucker did? Uh, I, I seen one video about it, and basically somehow he scammed somebody for 4,000 Bitcoin, something like that, right? 200, yeah, almost 250 two hundred, million dollars. 240, 240 million dollars, almost a quarter billion, scanning mm -hmm. for the Bitcoin. Did you see what he was doing in Miami and LA in the last yeah. month? Uh, I saw in that video, like he was just wilding going all Bro, in. Bro, my, my homegirl worked, my, my, shout out to my girl Yenny over at Live, and shout out to my boy Dave Grutman at Live Nightclub in, in Miami at Found Blue. He dropped 300 bands like two, three nights in a row over there. Right. <sighs> mm -hmm. He's not even 21, whatever. They don't give a fuck. He came to Poppy over here. Shout out to my folks, the H Wood group that own Poppy. And mm, he's out popping bottles, acting crazy. This is where it gets real ignorant. He hit some OF model chick trying to you know trying to throw some riz at her trying to press on her and she's like no i got a boyfriend i ain't tripping he bought her a pink lamborghini urus kitted up and got her a birkin bag and she's like thank you and he's like yeah fuck it just wanted to see you know if she whatever and she still turned him down because he looked like he eat cats for dinner you know what i'm saying he looked crazy he looked <laughs> he looked like a real little chinese dude so anyways it gets worse you know who Sky Bree is? She's an OF model, like porn star chick. She's kind of pretty. She's, she's pretty. She's on social. You ever seen her before or no? It sounds familiar, but not sure. Not sure. She's pretty. Sky Bree. Anyways, he's uh -huh. seen her at the club in LA. And he goes, hey, I just, I fuck with you. Yo, I got this Kelly bag. So he pulled out an Hermes Kelly bag. She's like, yo, is this shit real? She happened to see the security guards he was with. And she's like, you know what? I hired one of those security guards that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when I was doing, I, I need a security guard for me. And so I asked the security guard, hey, is this real? He goes, yeah, I went to Hermes with them on Rodeo Drive and picked it up. Now, this is the crazy part. 99 out of 100 times, you walk into Hermes, you could be balling. They're not going to sell you a Kelly or a Birkin. They just won't. Yep. But I think at a certain point, he was like, I don't give a fuck. I'm ready to drop whatever bread. And just so you know, for you guys out there that are trying to buy Kellys and Birkins, they always have one. There's always a Kelly and Birkin in there. It's just, do they want to sell it mm -hmm. to you? There's always a Rolex yeah. that's rare inside a Rolex dealership, especially the big authorized dealers, the real big ones, like the, 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 the um, yeah. flagship ones. They just don't want to sell you to watch. Same with Paddock, same with AP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He somehow got it, probably bought the woman a bunch of shit here and there. He didn't give a fuck because he just fucking money off because he stole it. Now, mind you guys, understand this, whether you hustling, whether you selling dope, whatever you're doing, if you hustling, when I mean hustling, I don't mean hustling and grinding in the right way. I'm talking about doing it the wrong way. Fast money goes even faster, spending wise. So he's out here yeah. fucking him shit off, whatever. He goes to Skybury, he gives her this to Kelly, gives another girl Kelly, gives another girl Kelly. And the whole point of the story is this. Jimmy, if you got away with stealing $240 million, what would you do? Act like I ain't even got it. What would you do? What would I do, at, like, right when I get it, or what would I do with the money? Regardless, what would you do? Would you be, would you still be here in fucking, in, in Houston? Would you be out, going out? Like, what the fuck would you do? No, I, nah, I, like I said, I, like, I ain't got it. I'll still be doing what I'm doing every day. You know what I'm saying? Like, you wouldn't would just, leave? Why would you stay in America when you know they, they go, the heat gonna come down, they gonna catch you? I mean, of course, he brought the heat on himself and made it worse, but, you know, you ain't got a whole lot of time. 
You know what I mean? You wouldn't I, I try definitely, to... I definitely hide out, but I, I, from what I know with crypto, like the way he did it, like how would he got caught? You know what I'm saying? If he was doing it right or if he was smart. Hold on. Let me see. I thought Vietnam, you could just move that around and do extra, what you do. You know what I mean? Edition USA. They don't. See. Wow. Crazy. The, the U.S. does not have an extradition agreement with Afghanistan, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Somalia, or Vietnam. Wow. Jimmy, that's actually a yep. beautiful thing. Yeah, I know. PDS debt. Getting in credit card debt is so easy. Getting out, well, the system's set up so we don't. If you're struggling with credit cards, personal loans, collections, or medical bills, you need to check out PDS Debt. PDS provides a service to match you with debt solutions tailored to your financial situation. If you're making payments every month on your debt and your balances aren't going down, PDS has solutions for you. Everyone with $10,000 or more in eligible debt qualifies and there is no minimum credit score required. Bad and fair credit are accepted. Save more while paying off your debt in a fraction of time. PDS Debt strives to understand your specific scenario and can help provide alternative solutions to becoming debt free. Debt can feel like a bottomless pit, but it doesn't have to. Stop waiting and start saving. Get a free debt analysis right now at pdsdebt.com slash cold. It only takes 30 seconds. That's pdsdebt.com slash cold. pdsdebt.com slash cold cold so let me ask you a question a quarter billion remember mm -hmm. jimmy you never are ever working again never ever especially in the vietnam you're never working again right that money can be yeah. transferred it can be do this this and this there's no extradition loss now i know that it might suck and you could pretty much balance between like certain parts like you could probably you know pass through uh indonesia you know obviously dubai Saudi Arabia here and there whatever maybe russia here and there Going to the U.S. ain't going to happen anymore. But remember, you good for the rest of your life. But the thing is, you could take your kids with you and your kids are all good, except Vanna. Vanna want to go to school, whatever. But Vanna could come visit you in Vietnam. Would that be worth it for you to go out there with all that bread or would you not go? Yeah, I would go. Like, like if I had to go, like if, if I couldn't stay because I did some shit in that, in the, that way, you know what I mean? Like the way I thought is like he wasn't even from here. He's from China, right? He, he over here Singapore. doing whatever. Singapore. So I was just like... You know how that crypto shit be like you can get away with stuff but if i did a crime knowing that i can't stay yeah i'm gone bro you know what i mean i'm gonna yeah. set myself up with that kind of money i could set myself up lovely and and and, and move around i'm sure and that not kind of only money, in vietnam bro the way that vietnam and some of these small southeast countries work it ain't gonna cost you a million to buy citizenship over there you could have a vietnamese passport yeah. you feel me and change all your shit like that no, kind definitely. of thing. I can change, bro. I, I can change anything, everything. I can buy my own little city out there. You know what I mean? And <laughs> yeah. with that kind of money, I could. And it's you know crazy. I mean? The whole point of the story why I'm bringing this up is because these kids today, man, and there's kids out here that listen to my show that's 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Look, man, I asked my kids the other day, would you want to be best friends with Flamingo? That's their favorite, one of their favorite YouTubers. Or would you want a million dollars? Now, again, my kids don't understand the concept of full money. They understand it to a certain extent. They understand how things are expensive. They understand how much, you know, a mortgage is. They understand how much cars cost and certain things. But it's still, they can't grasp the reality. They, they live a very blessed life. They're very, 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 you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're spoiled. You know, they, they live a good life. They live a better life than I ever did when I was growing up at their age. But they don't understand Definitely. the concept of a million dollars. And again, when they got their, their favorite YouTuber making, you know, a million a month from streaming, you know, it jades their mind. But they're like, are you crazy? Not even a question. I'd rather be yeah. Flamingo's best friend than have a million dollars. I'm like, okay, now look, money's not everything. True friendship is is priceless, right? But you really got to yeah. think about, all right, well, look, you ain't talking about fucking somebody over. You ain't talking about, all right, would I fuck Jimmy's wife for a million and be, no, 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 no. We ain't talking about that. We just talking about, you know, simple things. I'd rather take the money. Now, I asked a teenager the other day, yo, would you rather have no followers and you can't get no followers, but have a mill and just go out and live, you know what I'm saying? Start some businesses and then figure something out. He's like, nah, doc, I'd rather have 5 million followers. And I was like, you'd rather have 5 million followers than have a million dollars in cash? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, why? He goes, cause man, dog, clout is powerful, bro. And I was like, wow, man. you guys are fucking missing the point. And yeah. the point of the matter is, these dumbass kids are snitching on themselves. 
This dumbass Malone motherfucker, people think he's a legend. Like, yo, free Malone, he's out here fucking money. He's doing, man, it was legendary. And people are praising him for doing that stupid ass shit. Like, remember we used to spend 15 in a, in a club or 20 maybe? I did spend 35 in a club most, but like, was that the dumbest shit? I mean, okay, that was the dumbest shit I ever did if I look back at what I did in the clubs. How about you, man? The dumbest stuff I did in the club? No, I'm saying yeah. like the money you spent in the clubs. Like you, you ever spend 10 bands in a club? Yeah, yeah. I spent, okay. Do you think that was dumb? Like forty in the club before, definitely. Okay. Think about spending forty thousand in the club. You know how fucking stupid that is for the money you just. And I'd I, rather you know go to fucking I, mean? I, I used to throw twenty, thirty thousand in the club. You know what I'm saying? At a strip club. Okay. You know. And, so the point of the thing is, Malone Lamb, you were a fucking dumb fuck. Donkey of the day. Yeah. <laughs> you jackass of the fucking year. Your ass should have went to one of those fucking countries that doesn't have an extradition treaty with fucking the U.S chilled out you're young as hell you should have fucking spread that bread out in certain places bought gold coins did a bunch of shit that couldn't have been traced not in banks but put it through diamonds i'd have bought a motherfucking i would have bought a gang of two carat diamonds a gang of, i, I would have bought a gang of vvs g color two carats do you know what i'm saying you know you good at i would have bought a mm. gang of shit that's easy to fucking hide i would have bought a gang of gold coins like a ridiculous ridiculous amount of gold coins i would have had them spread out here and there and i would have fucking bounced now this is digital money you could have had that shit you could have just kept changing changing and i know when you look at you know um the the blockchain right and you start looking at all the shit and looking at fucking ether scan and everything yeah it'd be tough shit. but at the end of the day man like you know there's ways to get around it but because your dumb ass brought so much attention to yourself you got busted so all i'm saying is it's just some stupid ass shit i think if diddy and he knew he was going to fight it, whatever. I would have went to Russia. I don't went to Vienna. I would have went somewhere. I would have brought my kids. Fuck it. This show is brought to you by Captain Picks. We have a Captain Picks free trial. Is betting on football, baseball, and UFC killing your bankroll? If so, then I've got a gift for you. You've heard us talk about the captains. Now I'm giving you a free two-day trial on all NFL, MLB, or all access, which includes UFC and soccer and tennis. Just go to winnable.com slash captain picks and use code free in any single sport or all access plan. That's W I N I B L E dot com slash captain picks or click the, click the link in our episode description. Captain picks is where winners win together. Do you remember there was that, there was that thing going around for a long time, like yo, $50,000 or a dinner with Jay-Z. Do you mm -hmm. remember that that was going around everywhere? Yeah, yeah. Now, 50 ain't going to change your life or my life, so let's let's up it a little bit. Half a million dollars or a dinner with... Now, now mind you, I'm friends with Jay-Z, so it's different, right? But And so... Yeah. Um, okay, I'll change it. Okay? Half a million dollars or a meeting with Elon Musk and a dinner with Elon Musk. What would you do, Jimmy? Would you take the half million or would you take the meeting with Elon Musk? I'll take the money. I'm taking the money too. Now, why would you yeah. take the money? Because a, a, a dinner with Elon Musk is very vague, bro. It could just be a dinner. We don't even talk to each other. You know what I'm saying? Or you don't talk to me. So really what it is, and, and whatever he might even talk to me or whatever about, like it, it it's like, I'd rather take the money and know, knowing what I know, I could flip that bread and, and do what I can do with it. Yeah. Now, for all the people that was choosing Jay-Z or 50,000, now let's say you're a rapper or a singer. You'd be like, oh, he could change my life. At the same very time, you might not be that, that dope. That money can change your life too. <laughs> no, but you may not be that dope. You got a lot of people exactly. around you saying, you're cool, you dope. that's what I mean. There's a lot of people like who are cool and dope. He could change your life, but that money going to change your life. There's like a 5% chance that he might be feeling the music or your personality or anything else. You'd have a cool mm -hmm. story. Nah. Nah, man. No, Come on, definitely. dog. Be smarter, y'all. That's just dumb. And that brings me yeah. on the topic of things that you would do for a million dollars, Jimmy. Okay? Just random shit that I've always wanted to ask you. Yeah. Would you jump out of a plane with a parachute, of course, for a million dollars? With a parachute? Just jump out yeah. of a plane? Jump out of a plane yeah. for a million dollars. You would? Yeah. Yeah. With a parachute? I've been wanting to go skydiving. For real? Yeah, I've always wanted to skydive, bro. The you want to hear something crazy, dog? Yet. Why? What? 
My girlfriend has gone skydiving before. She's jumped out of a plane. Bro, the reason why I've never gone because I just can't fathom that I have to do the courses and have somebody hanging on me three times. You know, I get it. It's what you got to do just to but see you know how you your health, when you're there. But you know your, your, your heartbeat. Like, what's your resting heart rate? Do you even know what your resting heart rate is? Nah, I don't know. When's the last time you went to go see a doctor and seeing your, like, your cardiovascular health, you know, that shit, shit just your blood pressure? Is your blood pressure okay? My or physical, I do a physical. Yeah, my blood pressure is good. You know what I mean? I actually, okay. tomorrow I, in the morning, I got to do a physical again. It's my uh, annual checkup. Okay. Mm -hmm. I forgot, Jimmy. Do you got any pets? No, I don't got no pets. You have no pets? Man, I had you a dog back then, but, you know, Gabby has a dog now. Okay, Gabby has a dog now, right? Yeah, what kind like of dog is it? dog. A Frenchie. Okay, you got a little Frenchie, right? Yeah. Would you eat a small piece of the Frenchie's poop for a million dollars cash? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. we're, we're talking about us, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, anybody, yeah, I'm yeah, sure yeah, anybody yeah. else would do that. All right. All right. Let would me ask you. you. Let me Go ahead, ask, ask me. You. Ask me, dog. Would you do some content on OnlyFans for a million dollars? What kind of content? Now, you know what kind of content. <laughs> you remember that time, that phase when OF, OF started and there's like, they'll reach out to people. Girls, I remember a girl hit me up like, let's shoot some content. And I didn't know what she meant at first. And then I figured out later, basically, she want to fuck, like, fuck on camera. And I'm like, oh, hell no. So would you shoot some content for a million dollars on OF? Nah, I wouldn't shoot man, content for a million dollars. But you know what, though, yeah. bro? I ain't going to lie to you, dog. My stroke game been nice, man. Pause. It's shipping. This, these peptides, bro. Pepti peptides and hymns. Uh -huh. Your boy dangerous right now, dog. I just said this shit this morning. I know it's a lot. Listen, dog. I can't think of when I was in 19 or 20s. I couldn't last 5, 10 minutes. Maybe uh -huh. on a good day, maybe 10, 15, back when I was late 20s, early 30s. And then, you know, on a good one here and there, feeling kind of cool. Maybe I took one of them little motherfucking, uh, them little, you know, blue diamond pills with them little Viagras, this and that, whatever. Bro, right now... Yeah. Yo, your boy is like Floyd Mayweather in the ring right now, bro. Your boy is going rounds after rounds. I'm like, dog, what the fuck? I can't even believe this shit. I'm in fucking supreme health right now. It's crazy. But no, That's I would good, not shoot bro. no content for a million dollars. Okay. Well, speak, speaking of pets and dogs, would you eat a piece of dog for a million dollars? A piece of a dog? Yeah. Like a cooked dog like I do in Korea and Vietnam? Yeah, like cook. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, dog. I eat a dog for a million dollars, bro. Yeah. I know my girlfriend gonna be mad as fuck when she hears that because she and, and <laughs> shit. Yeah, I would eat a cooked dog, motherfucker. I would eat a motherfucker because I heard dog tastes good and I just wouldn't do it because it's weird. But for a million dollars, I'd do it. Why not? Million dollar cash, boom. All right, let me ask you a question, bro. All right, would you slap the shit out of your mom for five million dollars? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! One good slap. Oh, would you slap bro. the shit out of your mom for a million dollars? See, bro, now you know how, bro, you know my situation like that too, bro. Like, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like, I. Uh, Five I, M's. I, I, I do it. I do yeah. it. I'm gonna tell my mom, I'm gonna give you an M. So let me do this. She gonna take it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Gonna, ain't gonna be no love lost, right, mama? <laughs> All right, well, shit. Let me ask you one. Okay. Would you let DJ Homicide kick you as hard as he can in the nuts for a million dollars? No. Come on, bro. What kind of shit, dog? No. And then it's just, dog, that could legit, legitimately do permanent. Now. Like, yo, I'm going to tell you a fucked up You trying to have dude. more kids? Yeah. It about kids, about having sex, oh. period. Okay, oh, okay, look. I don't remember the dude's name fully. I want to say his name is Jonathan. No, is it Jonathan? I forgot his name, man. The crazy part is... Six or seven years ago, I ran into him, to, I ran into him again because one of my old elementary school friends reached out to me. And remember, I don't know if I ever told you this. My friend was one of the four founders of MySpace. And we grew up together as kids. Like I knew him up till about fifth or sixth grade. And I got kicked out of school. I reached out, seen my kid, you know, some friends of mine, whatever. So, bro, in fourth grade, there was a kid. I can't remember his fucking name, man. It wasn't Jonathan. You ready for this, Jimmy? Jimmy? We're in line. Mm -hmm. Do you remember like in elementary school, you wait in line, ready to go like whatever to a, to either go to the auditorium or you go in a fucking recess, whatever. You guys are always in line, right? Like in line, like yeah, the classroom yeah. line. Mm -hmm. So I'm in classroom line. He said something that annoyed me and I kicked him in his nuts. I hit him with like a good kick, like in the middle of his nuts. Dog, I completely forgot about kicking him in the nuts. Like a week later, my parents get called into the office. This kid had to go to the hospital, bro. 
and like he was like hurt for real and i was like fuck i felt bad about it let's say we was 10 years old 35 years later i see this dude and he's and we happen to roll up i'm in i'm in monterey park driving around i happen to see him randomly i'm in a gt3 rs porsche i'm just pulling up uh through monterey pass road and i run into him because my boy sees him and he's got his kids in school and his kids are like 10 or 12 years old so obviously he was able to have kids and shit but like that shit fucked mm -hmm. me up you know and i'm gonna tell you another story yeah. too i was at barney's beanery if you guys know about WeHo in LA and everything, Barney's Beanery is in the heart of Boys Town, but fuck all that shit. It's great, great food. It's a, it was a good place to eat. It was lit. There was a lot of girls there and everything. And Nicolette kind of had some dude push her, get into a rude situation, whatever. And this was a big, cockstrong Alabama motherfucking white boy. 6'3", 240, big dude. Big mm -hmm. motherfucker. And I was like, yo, bro, what the fuck's wrong with you? And he was drunk too, acting stupid. He was like, oh, whatever. And he started hitting on her. He had his girlfriend. He was acting weird. So I'm like, man, dog, shit. I'm getting impressed by this fucking crazy ass, cock strong, corn fed white boy. And I feel like a fucking punk. Mind you, this is probably the first year of our relationship. So it was like a weird, like, you know, and, and Nick ain't really like, oh, are you not going to defend me or whatever? But I just felt like a sucker in my own eyes, right? Yeah. We go to the parking lot and this dude's still out there acting up. And I'm like, God mm. damn, bro. I got my strap in the car. I'm like, nah, dog, I got to handle the fair one. This dude's big as hell, whatever. So dude goes, what's up, man? What's going on? He's like, fuck on me. We're in the parking lot right across the street from IHOP right there off Holloway, you know, in, in WeHo. Jimmy, mm -hmm. I turned around and I had no other choice, bro. I'll never forget. I was wearing white on white Air Force Ones. Nice, solid, you know, thick sole. Dog, I gave this dude a one, two, three. Hassan chop right to his nuts. Bro dropped. And that was it for him, dog. I mean, I took him down like he was he was done, bro. There was nothing else. I I honestly, I'll bet you if I came back 30 minutes later, he'd been in the same position I left him in. Yeah. And then Nick was like, what the fuck? You know, get in the fucking car. Took off. So no, I would not let nobody kick me in the nuts for a million dollars, bro. <laughs> five million <sighs> that should change a lot right 10 mil I, I i i think i might do it bro would you let would you let um try to think of somebody that's a decent size because uh, homicide thick boy let me see um would you let bro, uh uh hugh would you let hugh kick you in the nuts for 10 mil bro any anyone Anyone. You would not let motherfucking is a fucking Israel Adesanya kick you in the nuts for third trust me. You'd be dead. I would. I'd make sure we have medical right there. We in front of the hospital. We ready to, you know what I mean? Like, oh, 10 <laughs> mil. <laughs> I will, we'll shoot the scene and everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, we'll, we'll right. I have paramedics on, on site, everything. I ain't tripping. 10 mil? Bro. Okay. All right. All right. Last one, bro. <laughs> Last one. We got to get into some other shit. This is crazy. Okay. Would you eat? An entire eight ball cocaine for five million dollars. Bruh. Damn. Three point five, three point five grams, dog, an eight ball. You can sniff it too. You just couldn't uh, sniff all that. You know what I mean? You have to put it like at, and at just once, swallow. right? At once? Yeah, one time, bro. One yeah, nah, five minutes. I, I I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't yeah, do it. You'd have a cardiac arrest, dog. You'd die. Yeah, because I and, and I you know, I ain't never did that. So I ain't never sniffed coke and shit. So bro, I, I would have a cardiac No, nah, never, bro. You never smoked coke. You never never sniffed coke before ever. Mm -mm. I, I took uh, you know I, no I took a bump one time at a wedding because my, my my boys set me up, bro. We was both on bond at the time, and all my boys were doing it. They were trying to tell me to do a bump. We was drunk, and I said I will only do it. My boy do it, knowing that we on you know we on probation that we can't do it. That motherfucker does it, and I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. That shit ruined my night. Like I had this weird fucking back. Taste in the fucking back of my mouth, like hair spinning. Oh, so you did like, try it, it then? Just fucked up my whole vibe. You did one try bump. it, bump. yeah, I, I, yeah, one yeah, bump. yeah, yeah. One bump, bro. It's fucked up because you get that drip in your throat. It fucking sucks, man. Bro, that shit, that shit's yeah, crazy, that's, bro. Let me explain something for people who do coke out there that's still doing it. And it's not, let me explain one thing that my boy Josh Richmond had broke down to me. It's one of the illest shit. I haven't done it in almost thirty years. Right, I had a bad experience with it, and I did it for a little bit. Cocaine is a drug it is a high you searching for a high that doesn't exist and that is the best way to describe coke and so i would say the reason me, it just uh -huh. no go ahead go ahead 
I'm gonna tell you like uh, I was I was just talking about this to somebody yesterday, bro. There there are reasons why I don't do a lot of drugs, and so I told him like number one, the reason why I don't do shrooms and I never will is because like 15 years ago, bro, I was driving in Dallas to go meet my homeboys. They all at the hotel chilling, so I drive up, I pull up. And I come, I walk into the room and it's like six, seven of my homeboys in there. I'm saying, what's up to everybody? Everybody's saying, what's up to me? Uh, two of my homeboys though, they laying on the bed and they watching TV. Like they so focused, they ain't even say hi to me. So I'm like, man, they, whatever they watching, they probably be focused as fuck, you know what I mean? So I walk past the TV, passing them, I put everything down, I sit on a chair and I look over and they still just focus on this show. So I'm wondering like, what the fuck they watching? You know what I mean? I look at the TV, bro, and the motherfucker TV wasn't even on. <laughs> and so like for me it was like when i think about shrooms i think about that and i never want to be looking like that crazy and another reason why i don't ever do coke bro i had a homeboy this is when i first started doing my music shit i'm at the house uh i was you know back in the day them little cd things the the stamp to put the cd uh you 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 print out the uh the cover of the cd and you just yeah. stick it onto the cd so i was doing that at the house this is my first demo cd my boy comes over He's hitting lines, bumps, chilling. We talking da 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 while I'm doing all this shit, bro. This motherfucker literally sitting there, start talking to me, and so I'm listening to the story he's telling me. And as he's talking, bro, literally blood is dripping down the side of his fucking face, bro. And so I'm looking at him, I'm like, I'm like, oh, and he's like talking like he's just like, yeah. I said, oh, still, I'm like, oh, he's like, what, bro? What's up? I'm like bro you're bleeding from the side of your face you don't feel that and he was like what and he went like this he goes oh shit, my bad bro let me goes and cleans himself up and tries to come back to tell me the story i'm like bro i don't ever want to be anywhere looking like that bro like that's crazy bro so let you me know ask that, you, bro, that's you ever done molly before mm -hmm. you've done molly before come on yeah i've done molly mm -hmm. okay you've done ecstasy yep and you know what's i come from that air like what, yeah what's the craziest drug you ever done I say Molly. I did a uh, candy flip. I, I no. I, I did candy flip ecstasy. I, I took uh, three ecstasy pills and four hits of acid. They call it candy flipping. Yeah, I've done acid before too. I've done a lot of acid when I was in college, man. Mm -hmm. I've done almost everything. I, the only thing I haven't done is I've never done angel dust or PCP, and I've never yeah. injected. I've never injected um, heroin in my arm. So you know what I'm yeah. saying. They said that's I'm, the Rolls Royce of drugs, and people say. That shit's crazy, but yeah, I'm good. I'll take y'all word for it. Anyways. Yeah, they say that's the Rolls Royce of drugs. I'm all right. I don't yeah. need a Rolls Royce. Yeah. I'm cool yeah. with my car. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's get into some motivational let's talk. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's get into some motivational subject, talk, bro. man. Let's get into some motivational talk. You know, a lot of people hit me up and asking, I'm like, hey, man, how come, you know, the way you do your jewelry, you know, you just do like four or five pieces a year. You got a store. You do certain things. Like Jimmy be doing steals of the day on his stories. He be doing this shit. He be meeting people up here and there. And like, you know. I'm down to do that. I, I wish I had the time, you know, and, and I don't know, it's just not really my thing, but there's ways to make money. And I always feel like me and you could always make money. There's going to be a, some way to make money and it don't got to be from jewelry. But definitely, I am intrigued by it and I never asked you about it, but like, what's your whole motivation on dealing deal of the day and, and what kind of money are you making when you do these things? Like steal of the day, yo, quality, you know, you got the bus down this, this, and this, you got random shit you put up on there. What's your motivation by it? What are your profit margins? Like, how is that working with you? So the crazy thing about the still the day thing, bro, just to bring it back, like to like the origin of how it even started, bro. Like, um, you know, when I was working for Nick and them and, and started like really being at the store every day with them, I seen so much stuff coming in, you know what I mean? And I seen like people selling so much jewelry, you know, like, you know, they needing money or whatever. And um, at first it's like, I'm like, yo, I'm just trying to get all these deals. And, uh, you know, most jewelers, the way they think is that low, if I buy something for cheap, I'm not going to sell it for cheap. I'm, I'm going to save it and sell it for whatever it goes for. I'll just sit on it. And so I was like, man, some of these things, you know, I, I'm running out of money to buy everything. I can't buy everything. I ain't got no money. So I'm like, why don't I just post it? And let's say something that usually costs $6,000, um, I just bought it in for 35. I'm going to just put a rack on it. You know, I, I treated when I got into the jewelry business, I treated it like how I treated the dope game. You know what I mean? Like when I used to boot packs, it's like, yo, if I make a thousand off each pack, I'm cool. I'm straight. So it was just like, if I get it for 35, I'm going to just post it right now and, and sell it for 45. And it was crazy because it, it just started like 
they started going. And so that's when I started like playing around one day and I just started saying like steal the day, you know what I mean? Uh, Cause it's like, instead of a deal of the day, it's a steal because at the price it's, un it's you can't get it. That's what I got to explain to a lot of people. They don't understand is that like, when it's still the day, it means, okay, you're getting at a price that if you needed to get that same thing again, you won't be able to get it at that price. You know what I mean? And so I would just keep moving from that because I was always getting jewelry, you know, cheaper because, you know, I was always coming across people selling jewelry that they, you know, they, they were in tight spots. So, yeah. you know, I got into that. And like I said, that's how I run the steal of the day. I always look at the market and I see what the price is going for. And, um, you know, depending on how much I'm paying, like I said, profit margin, like I said, if I make a thousand, I'm good. You know what I mean? Sometimes yeah. it's like something smaller, whatever, I'll make 500, whatever. I'm cool with it. You know what I mean? Because if you think about it, if you can run a steal of the day or two steals of the day at 500, that's a thousand a day. You know what I mean? That's 365,000 yeah, a like year. Yeah, like for instance, guys, if he got a Cuban, not iced out, just let's say you got a 14 karat Cuban, you know, it's 70 grams. And Jimmy having to come up on it for two bands, okay? He could fuck around and be like, you know what? Three bands, because he can't go buy it at that price. But like, you know, let me just get rid of this. I don't want to deal with it. Leave it as is. Fuck it. Boom. Steal of the day. Let me mm -hmm. ask you a question, Jimmy. How often do you do steal of the day? Do you do it like three, four times a week? Man, now I probably do it two, three times a week, if that. I used to do it like every day, like literally. Okay. You know what I mean? Nice. nice. Um, now we, you know, we focus more on like on the business page to do it more. Um, but it's just like, um, yeah, you know, like on average, it just depends. You know what I mean? I've done a lot less more on my actual social media and I'm just focused on more other things I'm doing. But, um, yeah, steals are steals, man. And y'all, y'all gotta, y'all gotta understand, like sometimes people are gonna see the steal, they're gonna screenshot it and, uh, you know, they're gonna come back two weeks later and ask about it. No, when it's a steal, it's a steal, man. When it goes, it goes. And like I said, that's why I call it a steal today. Because okay. if you do the math and you do the research, you're going to know that whatever the price that is, you're not going to get that, you know, so anywhere else at that price. Let me counter this with people ask me all the time, hey, man, I got $25,000. What should I do? I got 10000 I got 5000 here and there. A buddy of mine is on TikTok. I don't want to give him any shout out. Just a person who sells jewelry. Mm -hmm. And what had happened was his, pa his, his dad had passed away, left him 40 bands. And he has a regular job. He hustles here and there. But then he gets off his job at 4 o'clock. So basically, he's got about two hours before the day kind of closes in the Diamond District in New York City. And what he does is, so he bought an AP. He bought a Royal Oak stainless steel. And he got one for a really good deal. He got it for like under retail. He got it for like 18. So pretty much what he wanted to do was try to get like 27 for the watch, which at the time, the mm -hmm. watch has kind of gone up. You can't really get stainless steel APs. Royal Oaks uh, chronograph, by the way, mentioned, you know, for certain prices, whatever. You oh, go to yeah, chrono24.com, you can't find it. So he would be like, y'all want 27 for this watch? Boom. So right then and there, he had just made eight bands profit. So what he's been doing for the last year is every single day he buys a random watch. If he gets a Submariner no date and he finds one for like eight bands, he's going to flip it for 10. He's trying to make at least 1500 a day profit every single day. Now, every single day, he at least makes a thousand, right? But so far now, he's closing a year. He's done 1500 a day flipping a watch every day. He'll go to fucking 10 stores going away. Hey, what are you going to give me for this? I'll get you a box. I'll get you this, get you this. Everything's always legit, but he's been smart. And this is something that can be done. He ain't the only person that could do this. It could be done. It's actually yep. a lot easier than you think. You just have to have the capital. You have to have the money. And if you're doing it mm -hmm. right, 1500 a day times 365. You're doing it on Sundays, everything. You go on the weekends, you know, because Saturday it's, it's closed because the Sabbath, you know what I'm saying? Jewish people don't work on Saturdays, but I'm saying like Saturday, Sunday, he's grinding too. And he's trying to find somebody to buy a watch. Be like, hey, listen, he don't give a fuck. Got no shame. He's always wearing a regular ass polo and some fucking chinos or some shorts, depending on how hot it is outside. Looks like a regular, unassuming dude. That's over half a million dollars in profit a year doing a side hustle. And he makes about $160,000 on his regular job. So, you know, he's clearing... 700 bands a year and he has a loan out corp mm -hmm. I mean, he has an llc he has an s corp and you know the way that you sell your loan up corp is you know the way you do taxes and everything if you have it done the right way you could avoid a lot a lot a lot and a lot of motherfucking taxes just do it the right way so what jimmy's doing For is sure. trying to make a stack a day you know some days he makes two stacks some days is whatever but you know right there that's an extra 300 to 500k a year for jimmy just on his side hustle 
So guys, if you're yeah. asking about that, we try to bring about some motivation and stuff. It's actually a good thing. Now, for all those of you motherfuckers think you're going to make some money gambling, look, always know when you're gambling, if you go out with this, like, yo, you're going to lose unless you fuck with captain's picks. Do you know what I'm saying? And, you know, they are on some 62, 63% winners and, you know, they, they, they've been making people a lot of money. So if you haven't, you know, join. You heard the commercial, Captain Picks. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's good to try to do that hustle. My hustle was like, let me make five bands a day. Now I had a different thing I had to do it for. So let's say, for instance, six, six days go by and I didn't make five bands and I got to make 30 bands to make that up. So basically, yeah. I just try to make sure that, you know, I'm like, all right, well, look, my goal today, on top of whatever I do from sponsorships, the podcast, whatever the fuck it is, right? I want to make five bands a day profit, right? It's $1.8 million. And that's mm -hmm. basically been my hustle. That's what you try to do. And just, just, just look, guys, it can be done. I just brought watches up because it is something that you can do. You can buy, sub, buy, you know, if you stick with Rolex and AP, you know, I don't think the paddock number is right there with you, but if you stick with Rolex and AP, you can find it. You can get some money, you, but you have to find someone and you have to do a little work, right? Yeah. But think about it. Would you rather make $1,500 a day doing that type of work? Or, I mean, let me do some math real quick. Let's say you work eight hours a day, okay? So $1,500 divided by eight, that's $187.50 an hour. Where are you going to make $187.50 an hour? Not even in construction, not even in laying brick or whatever else. So mm -hmm. if you really think about it, if you spent eight hours a day just doing that, it, it, it's a decent hustle and it does work. This ain't some scam or anything because I'm not selling a class and I never would be. Yeah, exactly, but man, for sure. That's what that is. Yeah, um, so, you know, y'all y'all should know that. Like, it's possible. You know what I mean? Y'all think about a get rich quick or scam or whatever or, or, or a, a master class. No, it's real simple, man. You get a little money or if you got a, you got a network, you know what I mean? A lot of people ask me, you know, like how much did I need to get started in the business or, or how much did I, you know, did I put out? And, and I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I was blessed because I had a network of people and I had relationships and, and that's a key, man. Y'all got to know that. Like, no matter how much money it is, it's all about your characteristics and the personality as a person. And because of my relationships with people, I'm not going to lie to you. I got into this jury business with really not having to put out too much money because I had relationships with people that had the watches, had the jury, and, you know, they trusted that I was going to sell it and bring the money back, you know, just like when I was in the streets. So just know that, you know what I mean? You building that network. That's how you're going to be able to get the margins. You know what I mean? A lot of y'all might even have a friend or someone y'all know, a friend of a friend that's an AD. You never know, man. And, and that's the way you can get right in there, man, and really make it happen because people going to pay. People pay for that convenience, man. Yep. Hey, Jimmy, you were saying something earlier before we, had, we started recording. It was, it, was, it was something really dope. I want to kind of almost end the show with that. What was it again? If you can't pay for it, what was it? If you can't pay for it all, then don't pay for it at all. All you motherfuckers out there you with credit I mean? card debt, finance and shit. And, on the and I know a lot of people might disagree with what I'm trying to say. You know, but it's Klarna. Just... You ever use Klarna before? I don't <laughs> no, even know what the fuck that? that is, but someone, I don't know. It's like that five, five payments. If you want to buy a jacket from Kith or you want to buy a fucking, a pair of fucking purple brand jeans or something, you can use Klarna and this and that and it finances. I seen something like when I was buying a, a plane ticket the other day and it was like, oh, uh, for five easy payments of break like a breakdown of my ticket i'm just yeah, like I'm what the fucking, heck? i mean again i know we're in different places in life but i know when i was in my 20s i didn't give a fuck i'd run dead up here and there but it's just put you in worse situation later you know when but i was yeah. young bro my dad said one thing that stuck to me forever bro and he's like you know what if you want a rolex then buy you a rolex and if you ain't got the money to buy a rolex then just wait until you got money to buy a rolex don't go yeah. buy a seiko or something else but knowing you want that rolex and, and I'm saying with that to say that act your wage. You know what I mean? Like, just simple nah, as bro, that. bro, look, you know that's why like, I tell people, use an Amex card. You got to pay that motherfucker on at the end of the month. Yeah. You know, but yeah, you me know personally, the Chase Sapphire Reserve card is the best credit card there is in the world because of points. But mm -hmm. yeah, if you can't afford it, I, I believe you. Now people say, oh, what about leasing cars here and there? People don't realize you lease a car the right way, it's a tax write-off in a best yep. way. So, you know, I'm not trying to buy a car and let it depreciate and get killed here and there and whatever when I could write off the fucking lease and whatever it is. No, but you know definitely, what? I, definitely. I was going to end the show right now. Oh, we were going to end the show right now. But I just thought uh -huh. about something, Jimmy. What? <laughs> 
Jamie, how do you feel about girls with tattoos, man? I'm just curious. Like, like, do, like, when you see a Bro. really beautiful girl, like a beautiful girl, Dude. right? Like she is chop dead gorgeous, and then she got a tattoo on her titty. Bro, do you realize how God works? This is so crazy because this is something I've been wanting to talk about on the show for at least two, three weeks, and I keep forgetting. See, like, and it's crazy how you bring this up, bro. So I want to tell you. So my thought, right, and this is this is my opinion, and and I've had certain situations that has proven to me my opinion is right. That any girl that got her chest blasted or her stomach tatted, you know what I'm saying? Not 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 the uh, the the waistline because that's what you already know what they do with that. You know what I'm saying? Because they got tummy tuck. But girls, for me, right, when I see a girl. And she a bad chick. She fine. And she got her chest tatted or her freaking stomach tatted, bro. I feel like she was like a thug. She was she was thugging at one yeah. time, bro. Like she was a tomboy yeah. and she was thugging on some real thug shit. And she realized one day that she's a pretty girl. And now she becoming bad. You know what I mean? Because for me, bro, like the chest is a beautiful thing, man. I just can't get a girl with a bunch of tattoos. Like even an arm sleeve, bro. It just I can't, dog. If you got a little small, little cute, little, I'm sorry. If this small, I wouldn't mind if a girl had a little small, little dainty things here and there, a little cool, little small thing on her hand, like a little small, couple little small. And I'm talking about like real small, super dainty, light, Dr. Wu type shit. One or two, three here and there. I ain't gonna lie. So, you know, it's crazy. Now tell me if I'm right, right? And, and bro, if a girl got a sleeve or she's tatted, bro, I feel like when they got the tattoos that don't got outline, it's a little bit cooler. But them girls that got them bold lines man, tatted on them, bro. Like <laughs> Dog, listen, man. This is a chick in Miami. I forgot her name. Drop this chick is beautiful. I think she's half Vietnamese, half white. She's drop dead gorgeous. She's a bartender. I forgot what place. Really popular place. And drop dead gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And from sheer down, she is completely tatted and color tattoos. If it's one thing I regret about tattoos, I regret getting any color. A black and white only, gangster shit only, black and gray. She's completely tatted. Legs, everything. I'm just like, God damn, man. Why, man? And people be like, oh, why are you judging? I'm talking about what the fuck I like. This is our show. We talk about what the fuck we prefer, what we like. And Jimmy, yeah, I'm sure you align judging. with me. Would you fuck with a girl who had, that like, was really pretty, everything was cool, but she was covered in tattoos, like blasted arms, legs, everything. Would you fuck with a girl like that or no? Would I fuck with her? I'd fuck with her if she was a cool vibe, real pretty, but I'm talking like, about date, wife, this chick. Yeah, yeah like, wife, a chick. I'm sorry. Nah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Guys, oh no, yeah, hold man. on. I'm sorry. Hold on. I lied again. I got, well, hold on, hold on, Jimmy. I got, <laughs> Jimmy. Yeah. For $5 million. Let me see. Hold on. Where, where, where's the JB tattoo? It's on your left neck, right, right? Left side of your neck? Yeah. Okay. On the right side, you open, right? Yep. Okay. On the right side of your neck, would you get a big ass dick tattoo for $5 million? You can't erase it for five years. You can't remove it. Laser tattoo for five years. Would you tattoo a big ass dick on your neck for $5 million? Man, bro. My first reaction is no, right? But knowing me, I get technical. I start trying to break this down. Like, I'd wear a turtleneck for five years if I could, you know what I'm saying? And take that five million. You know what? You're right. I wouldn't even wear the turtleneck, dog. I'd be like, yo, that's five M's, five years, bro. I would make jokes about it. Yo, I would make it be like, yeah. I would turn it into a viral moment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The but five it's just million funny, dollar man. dick. <laughs> yeah, it's funny as shit. Guys, if you don't know, we are oh, 10 man. days away 10 days away from the Wash Lord Oceanside Scramble. Wash Lord Oceanside Scramble, the second annual. Last time, the guys from San Antonio would won at San Antonio, Texas in the house. We got people coming from all over. There's about eight spots left if you want to get it. It is the most affordable tournament that I do. It's so it would be a good time. It's at the beautiful Arrowwood Golf Course in Oceanside, California. Guys, go to washedgolf.com or hit me or the Wash Golf page. Hit up Popeye, my manager, whatever it is. 10 days, I'm going to be there. Jimmy, you going to be there? Yeah, I'm going to be there. You know there. Okay, we going to be there. I'm working on my way to start touching that club. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I actually might go. By the way, you see Renee Vodka's playing golf now, dog. Hey, I will tell you I play better than that. I'll tell you that. Okay, okay, okay. So look, dog. I'm going to tell him. Hey. I wonder if he's going to be in town. I'm going to tell him to come. By the way, shout out to my boy Josh Park. He's out there. He's a coach. And uh, my girl's playing golf again. So, you know, she's been at club. She's playing. And... um. You know, so shit, man, my girl might come up, pull, pull up to the next Wash Lord Invitational at Trump next year. But yeah, 
10 days away from the Wash Lord and uh, Oceanside Scramble guys at uh, Arrowwood. And um, I don't know, man. I think that's pretty much it, guys. Always remember, this is not your practice life, okay? Many are cold. Few are frozen. Always be scared of people who aren't afraid to hear no. Jimmy, you got anything you want to say real quick before we sign off? Man, you know, get it done right so you ain't got to get it done twice, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, if you want something bad enough, you'll have it. And if you ain't got it, obviously you ain't want it that bad. And in the words of the good Reverend Mr. Sugar Free, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. All right, guys, yes, we'll sir. see you next Friday. We out, y'all. We took a chance to